Uh, Everesting World Records have been tumbling recently. Pro cyclers, pro road cyclers have been given a go. Katie Hall got the women's record. I'll speak about that in a minute. Uh, and Manuel Bookman got the men's record. The women's record was obviously impressive, but like the difference, like the person she got off did it on a rubbish climb. I was in Bristol and like it was a fair effort, but like she smashed it by two and a half hours. Well, the men's record is, is getting slightly more interesting because there's so many people doing it. So obviously Gaimon did it, he got it down to like 840 or something. Uh, no, like 850, no, it was 750. Then um, old Keegan Swinson did it in about 742. And then Bookman did it in 7.30. And Bookman had his power data. Now, number one thing about Bookman's effort, it doesn't really count because he didn't follow the rules. And he's a donkey. I don't know why he didn't. But he did a different ascent on the first one. So he did the first ascent here. And then he started doing the ascents from Austria. Anyway, his numbers are daft. Like, for him to beat Keegan Swinson, it was... Like, you'd think, oh, obviously he's going to beat Keegan Swinson. Like, he's a pro... You know, came fourth in the tour and stuff. But... He did it on a rubbish climb, like, in some senses, especially the descent. Like, look at this descent. There's so many hairpins. So, anyway, we're going to get into the into the details. Um, we'll compare the two. So, the first descent, which I'm not happy about him doing this. I think it was really stupid. I don't know if it's going to go down officially. Uh, I'm still going to count it probably as official, but it's tough. Anyway, first one, he does it. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is really bad. First one, he does it 8%. Uh, climb, 43 minutes, 270 nor uh, watts, so 4.4 watts per kilo. That's not that mad. Assuming 62 kilos, probably is, could be lighter, could be more, but numbers roughly seem add up. Um, so anyway, this the VAM is the most important thing. So the VAM was 1,200 VAM, which is obviously impressive. If we look at Keegan Swins in the VAM, obviously he chose the same climb on every single one. Um, it's a 13-minute climb for him. He did 4.1 watts per kilo, potentially more, because I think he does weigh slightly less, but his VAM was um, 1,300 VAM. So obviously he wasn't going to get the record now. Um, so the first one was a warm-up. He said that he didn't go that hard at the beginning and just so this is the actual climb that he chose on every single one called the Heimelberg. Um so we'll get rid of the first bit because it's sort of a downhill, but just for this climb here, it's nine percent, eleven percent average. So that nine kilometers at eleven percent, which is really what you need to be doing. Uh, and he did five watts per kilo on this run, uh, potentially more depending on his weight. But you can see here the amount of hairpins is really unbelievable. Um, and obviously it will slow you down because Everesting is not just an ascent, it's also a descent. So it, his van is now 1500 and that is, that's really hard to beat on a not so steep climb. So you have to have an 11% climb because 1500 van on a, like, let's say a 6% climb, you have to be doing closer to 6 watts per kilo, like 5.5 to 6 watts per kilo to get it up because of the air resistance. Um, but obviously on a steeper climb, um, there, you're going slower in air resistance. Obviously, it's cubed. Uh, it's like the proportional to the cube of your speed. So, uh, you know, the faster you go, it's not a linear. Um, and he keeps going at this this sort of speed here. Again, 1500 bam. And he starts to whack it up a little bit, 313 watts. In terms of altitude, it's not too crazy. It goes up to 1600 meters, but I assume Bookman is probably not too bad at altitude considering the old tour. Um, Cadence is also classic out the saddle, in the saddle. He's probably struggling a little bit for gears potentially, but I assume he went smaller than a 39. I think I'm pretty sure 39, 28, you'd be grinding a bit more than that at, at 14k an hour. Um, again, it'll bring up to 5.1 watts per kilo. Um, his fastest time, he got top 10 all time, mid Everest at 315 watts, which is 5 watts per kilo, 40 minutes. And like, you know, for most people, 5 watts per kilo for 40 minutes would be like a fair whack. Um, again, he kept it pretty consistent. Again, 312 watts, 309 watts. I don't know why sometimes it has the downhill section part of it. Maybe it's a slightly different climb. Um, well, it's the same segment, I don't know. Uh, but again, 5 watts per kilo. And then this last one, again, 300 watts. He, I think he was flagging. He said the last, like, 1,000 meters climbing vertical, <clears throat> which I think would be the last climb here. He did 274 watts. So obviously, he was flagging. So he went pretty hard, um, potentially overcooked it a little bit. But I think, obviously, his climbing speed compared to Keegan Swinson's is a lot faster. Keegan only did 1,300 VAM. And VAM is, in my opinion, the best way of measuring the Everesting attempt because it is not... You know, it's not a race where it's watts per kilo and stuff like that. Like, the easiest way to measure is just VAM, because that's what you'll compete against. VAM and then speed on the downhill. On the downhill, his speed was good. 60k an hour. That's not bad. But look how many surges he had out the corners. 400 watts. That's not ideal. Okay, it's not huge power. But look at down here. It's, it's really bad. And obviously, you know, Bookman's a good descender for sure. Um, but Keegan Swinson's descent it was um, something else, because his average was 67k an hour. But of the actual bit he's climbing... He's descending 77k an hour. So 
I mean, Bookman's still, I think, if he'd chosen a better climb in some sense, then it, it would have been good. But obviously, he has less turnarounds. So it's always going to be, you know, a bit of a battle between length of climb, turnarounds, and gradient. I think gradient people have shown the steeper the better. Like, that's that's obvious because, you know, the VAM is easier to get. If you're climbing a 20% climb to get 1,500 VAM, is far easier than if you're climbing a 5% climb. That's just, you know, simple maths. Um, so I think that's obviously... A pretty important thing but in terms of finding a long climb that's that's straight isn't necessarily the best like this climb here in some ways could have been better that i reckon the descent would have been faster but obviously you know it's eight percent that's the vam here he's doing 1200 vam for obviously he's doing less what's per kilo 4.3 or whatever but you know it's it's not a, not ideal um i don't know what, what do you think does it count like as an everest for me i don't think it does because it's not what the rules are. You have to do the same climb. Obviously, he would have got it. Like, you know, there's no doubt he would have got it. Um, but I would like to see also Keegan Swinson do it uh, uh, not a high altitude, see what he could get. Because is Keegan Swinson a better descender on this climb? I'd argue he probably is because he's a professional mountain biker. Um, but yeah, it's super interesting to see what sort of watts per kilo these boys can do. Um, five watts per kilo um, is now sort of seems like what you have to be able to climb at for, you know, a fair duration but the distance is also interesting obviously 162 kilometers um is a fair bit shorter i think seven kilometers shorter that's not insignificant um and then obviously 8900 meters of climbing is what we need or more or less um seven and a half hours seven thousand kilojoules of burn that's that's pretty huge as well um that's tough day out in the saddle like trying to get 5k normally people say like 5000 kilojoules is a good day out for pros um, it works out to be about 216 average power for six hours, more or less. Um, so obviously this is 7,000 kilojoules. Obviously on the descent, you're not doing any. If it was flat, you'd be doing more. Um, but yeah, he's on the descent, he was fast. But let's have a look at the segment because I don't think he was... I mean, he's not going to take any risks. He's, I mean, it's like if he crashed out on this, it wouldn't be great. But I mean, he's still 13th on it. So for sure, I he could have gone faster. This is obviously in a race, but then he would have put out to put out more, more power. Um, so yeah, that's that's the power for the men's. Um, you can donate from. Obviously, everyone's doing for charity and stuff, so that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, 285 normalized for seven and a half hours at 62 kilos is what you need to do to beat him, which is mental. I think that is pretty unbelievable. Obviously, his was like 265. Gaimon's was similar. Obviously, weighs like five kilos more. Um, we can get Gaimon stats up, but Gaimon climbed had a rubbish climb. There's no way he could compete because he had to do too many turnarounds. So. You know, I think this this climb in some sense was bad, but I think overall it's probably pretty decent because the number of turnarounds might make up for the for the loss in um, in speed on the descent. But anyway, what are your thoughts? Does it count, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? I think I think it probably shouldn't do. I just would have liked to see him do it properly, but I think it's never going to be beaten. If this is taken as the official time, I think it would take someone really special to do it because. Like, Bookman probably did train for this. Like, I saw they only had one bottle on. Like, I reckon he didn't. I thought he was going to go for, like, an easy ride. Like, he looked at this and was like, oh, and I get it. So, for sure, it's going to be hard. I think the only people who could beat it would be people who are, like, world tour level fitness. But focus on that, like, only. And I think that would be, you know, the, the only way you could do it. I, I don't imagine that many people who... Could, like many world tour guys would even try and attempt it so i think it's going to be stay beaten for a long time that's if it gets into the official one i don't know if it is so we'll see anyway go to the women's unfortunately there's no power data i messaged her she blanked me so that is what it is um there's not much to say on this climb to be honest i can't look into it too much the old record on the women's was done by alice thompson who's from bristol there's a pretty good effort from her to be fair but she had a rubbish climb like it was steep which is good obviously but the climb is called nice hill Look at that on Strava, but it's got like a dodgy descent. It's not like it's not the one you'd want to do. There's lots of like cars, there's speed bumps on the descent. You know, it's not good. Anyway, she again closed, chose a pretty similar climb. Don't know why it's in miles. Don't know what miles are. Uh, but anyway, now 2.31 miles is basically like three and a half kilometers um, for anyone who like, doesn't use stupid miles. Um, so yeah, that's 18 minute climb. It's not too bad. VAM is a thousand VAM, which is like decent um but not unbelievable for the gradient like a thousand bam is decent on a temp like on a six percent gradient let's say for that long but on a ten percent like it's not unbelievable i think this probably could get beaten um obviously like k2 is a very good climber but I, I still think it's not 
it, it's still possible to beat it. It's not like Bookman where it's really going to be really, really tough. Um, my sort of what's per kilo, the what's per kilo guess on this is 3.6. I'd probably say it probably is maybe a little bit higher than that, maybe 3.8 um, based on, you know, the VAM calculations, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, it's, it's, it's nothing mental. Um, well, sorry, it is mental, uh, but I don't think it's like, yeah, it's not like the point where you're never going to be able to beat it. In terms of the climb, I think it's pretty decent. Um, obviously, the climb is a huge thing to take into consideration. The descent speed isn't the fastest. It's similar to Bookman's, but obviously Bookman's climb was significantly longer and had hairpins. So in that sense, I think realistically, he, it's not perfect. You can see she was pedaling. She has cadence on this. So you can see she was pedaling on the descent. Um, and I assume she's braking because you should go down to like 50k an hour or something, which again isn't ideal. So potentially the record could be beaten on a a sort of more straight climb but i think in duration this is probably one of the best i've seen really i think i think like three and a half kilometers at nine percent is pretty decent maybe though it lacks that pure like 11 percent 11 percent you obviously do get better van um right by the coast as well so altitude isn't an issue so uh, yeah <clears throat> the record was smashed it was about two hours or something um i think the official time was about 10 hours and one minute so yeah, it's good good to see. I think I think it will get beaten. Um, I think it, it could do. Um, but I just again depends who's gonna turn up, who's gonna give it a go. Um, but I think Bookman's one is is really I thought Keegan Swinson's again, like you know, when, when it was done, everyone said, you know, it's gonna be tough to beat. You know, you need a World Tour Pro and a World Tour Pro has come along and whacked it big time. Um and I, I still can't get over this. Like midway through just whacks out well over five watts per kilo for forty minutes. Um, and it just keeps going. 280 normalized at 62 kilos. Um, we can get the old watts per kilo out. I don't even know. I mean, he says he's 62. He could be less. Four and a half watts per kilo normalized for eight hours. Seven and a half hours. Get around on that, son. <laughs> no way people are getting around on that. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's a super good effort. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Um, I think this could be the end of the Everesting season that has been on my channel. Because I don't think anyone's going to beat these records anytime soon. But I said that about Keegan Swinson, and it's happened. So, you know, Chris Froome, Quintana, Bernal, one of the big boys, turns up, could be him, G, maybe, you don't know, anyone. I think it would be good to see see what could happen. I think it's not going to move much more than this, um, but maybe the logistics could be something that people could work on. I, I'm not sure. Uh, it would be interesting to see what happened. Obviously, Keegan did a po uh, podcast about it, which was really interesting. Um, maybe Bookman will do the same, or there'll be some sort of release and see exactly what he went, why he chose to climb, etc, etc. It'd be good to good to see. Maybe I'll log a message, see if he uh, wants to get on with a little video. We'll see. Um, but somehow I doubt he'll want to get on this uh, dodgy YouTube channel. Uh, but anyway, it is what it is, and I'll see you next one.